Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Yeah, I don't think Mother knew about this. Uncle Marvin was strangled by his own beard. Yep, you never saw it coming. No, this is not a weekend gardening show, but it is about roots. Hi, welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. We are always hoping to teach you a little more about how to research your ancestors, inspire you, and of course, entertain you too. Family history is an amazing pursuit with endless amazing stories, and you're going to hear a few of them today. Our first guest on the way in about seven minutes is Hank Jones. He has collected some of the most incredible stories you will ever hear concerning family history. He has documented them in a series of books called Psychic Roots, Serendipity, and Intuition in Genealogy. And he will share a few of his favorites. These are stories that will make your jaw drop. And if you're new to family history, you need to know that these things are not uncommon. I've had them happen myself, and I can't wait for you to meet Hank. Then my good friend A.J. Jacobs is back. A.J., of course, is an editor with Esquire magazine and a multiple New York Times bestselling author. And when you hear him and the unique way he sees things, you'll understand why. He is the creator and host of the upcoming Global Family Reunion in New York City on June 6th. We've had him on before, and we want to find out what's the latest on this amazing event, which will include remote sites in Houston, Salt Lake City, Europe, and other places. You can and should be a part of it. And then Tom Perry returns, our preservation authority, after having created a little trouble last week, being way too technical on a preservation question. I will insist on him speaking plain English this week and make it all a lot simpler. Don't worry, he can take it. And if you're new to the show or would like to listen again to past shows, it's time you downloaded our free Extreme Genes app to your iPhone or Android. Just go to your phone store, find Extreme Genes, install it, and it's all there waiting for you for free. So here's my tip of the week. A friend was recently discouraged because she couldn't find her ancestor in a census record. So I told her, oh, he's probably there. And I reminded her that there are so many ways a name can be messed up. It could have happened 135 years ago when the census taker heard a name wrong or simply spelled it wrong. It could have happened in the 21st century when someone transcribed it wrong for indexing. I had her give me the names of family members and the place they were supposed to be. So I chose the one with the least common first name, entered it, along with a plus or minus five on the assumed birth year, and searched by first name only. 22 choices came up. We then went through each and went down the list until we hit lucky 13. The family name had indeed been butchered by the census taker and further mistranslated by the indexer. Stevens had become Levin. <laughs> yeah, but there was no mistaking the family group by the first names, ages, places of birth, place of residence, and the occupation of the father. Never forget, there are a lot more identification points than just the name. I hope that helps. It's time once again for your family histoire news from the pages of ExtremeGenes.com. We begin with an awesome story from The Mirror in the UK. It's about a genealogy firm in London called Fraser & Fraser that has spent over four decades putting together a list of very funny names from the 19th century. One of the individuals on the list was blessed with 26 given names. See if you can get where the parents were going with this one. Anne, Bertha, Cecilia, Diana, Emily, Fanny, Gertrude, Hypatia, Yug, 
Jane, Kate, Louisa, Maud, Nora, Orphelia, Quince, Rebecca, Starkey, Teresa, Ulysses, Venus, Winfred, Xenophon, Yeti, Zeus. Yes, every letter of the alphabet is represented right there. They've narrowed their overall list of 200-plus names down to their top 10, and they include our girl with the 26 names, Mineral, daughter of Henry and Emma Waters, yes, Mineral Waters, Faith Hope Charity, Faith Hope Charity Brown was from Gillingham in Kent County, That's It, Who'd Have Thought It, That's It, Who'd Have Thought It, Restell was born in Strood, Kent in 1886, Friendless, Friendless Baxter was from Leeds, where he was born in 1871, there's Zebra, daughter of James and Mary Lines. Yes, she was Zebra Lyons. Windsor, daughter of William and Anne Castle. <laughs> Windsor Castle. One too many. Yes, one too many Gladstone was born in London in 1870. I like this one. Time of, you guessed it, son of Thomas and Alice Day. He was Time of Day. And uh, maybe the most unusual, Leicester Railway. Leicester Railway Cope came into the world in 1863 at the Leicester Railway Station in a train carriage. Find the story link at ExtremeGenes.com. A story of heartbreak and discovery from the L.A. Times may hit close to home for some. It's about the Irish banished adoptees and their search for family back in the Emerald Isle. Now, from the 1940s to the 1970s, around 1,900 Irish kids born to unwed mothers in Catholic church-run homes were adopted by Americans. Now many of them are helping each other to find their birth families, some with positive results and experiences and some with quite the opposite. The headline uses the word risky in describing the risk-reward possibilities. It's a story loaded with heartbreak and inspiration. Check it out at ExtremeGenes.com. And finally this week on TLC... Who Do You Think You Are features singer Josh Groban. Check your local listings for times in your area. And that's your family histoire news. And coming up next, he's got a lot of fancy titles and genealogy, but best of all, he's a terrific storyteller. In fact, he has probably recorded some of the most remarkable family history discovery stories ever told. He's Hank Jones, author of the series Psychic Roots, Serendipity and Intuition and Genealogy, I think some of what he has to tell you may make your jaw drop. And the weird thing is, these things happen all the time. That's in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Genies, not long ago, something happened with one particular online research service that changed everything. It happened with a service that already has 75 million members worldwide, and it's not who you think it is. Hi, it's Fisher, and you know I'm always looking for new and better ways for you to discover your ancestors, not just the data, but the stories. The online service I'm talking about takes your family tree and then uses its powerful automated technology to match the people in your tree to over 5 billion records from a around the world. Censuses, newspaper stories, vital records with 97% accuracy. This means no more wading through thousands of useless so-called hints. This also means the site itself is constantly looking for matches for you even while you're sleeping. What site does all this? It's MyHeritage.com. You can try MyHeritage.com for free. Here's a special gift from me. Use discount code ExtremeGenes after signing up and get an exclusive 20% discount at MyHeritage.com. How's your family history research going? Are you stuck on a difficult line? Don't know how to start? Let the professionals at Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services help. Heritage Consulting has been providing professional research and consultation services since 1978. They can help you find your own personal family history for far less than you would expect by researching, collecting, analyzing, and interpreting the numerous historical documents your ancestors left in their lifetimes. They'll then provide you with a professionally written report 
in book or electronic form that you and your family can enjoy for literally generations. Knowledge of your ancestors forges stronger ties within your family and helps children better appreciate who they are within the context of your family history. Call Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services right now. The call is free. Dial 1-877-537-2000. That's 1-877-537-2000. You'll speak directly to an expert genealogist. Find out more at Heritage Consulting While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family's story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. You'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Genes listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling. Welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, with my special guest, Hank Jones. He is a fellow of the American Society of Genealogists, a fellow of the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society. He's a lecturer. He's written Palatine Families of New York, 1710, and a couple of great books called Psychic Roots, Serendipity, and Intuition in Genealogy. And Hank, first of all, I don't even know how you had time to talk to me today. (laughs) (laughs) Keeps me off the streets. I guess so. Well, let's talk about this serendipity thing, because we hear about it all the time. And for people who may not have gotten into genealogy yet or family history research, you might be surprised at some of the stories that happen. And it certainly happened to me early on. How about you, Hank? Did you ever have an experience right at the beginning? Uh, yes, it just, and it just kind of built from, from then on. It did, they just start happening right and left. And uh, at first I thought I was the only one getting a little too close to the butterfly net. <laughs> I, I didn't know what was going on. What happened was is I, I wanted to find out if really this was just me that was, this was happening to. So I sent out 200 letters, oh, probably about 15 years ago, to some of the leading genealogists around the world. And I said, now I'm not knocking the scientific approach to genealogy because my fellow fellows from the ASG and all of the great scholars of genealogy over the years, you know, make the point that this is really a scientific thing we do when it's done right. Right. But I wanted to know once in a while did something happen that you just couldn't explain that somehow led you to success in, in climbing the family tree that, that uh, you weren't expecting. And I'm up to, I'm up to 1,300 uh, experiences shared from our fellow genealogists wow. around the world now. And so it, it does happen. I started very young. Uh, I've been writing books since my days at Stanford in, in the 1960s on the Palatine families of New York. These are German immigrants that came in the 18th century, right. to colonial America. Well, the wild thing was, to my knowledge, I didn't descend from any of them, yet I almost felt compelled to write about them. And the main center of the thing is I wanted to find as many of the ancestral homes of these 847 families that come to New York overseas in Germany. And so I found a little lady over there who would literally go village to village for me where I had theorized these places would be, because this is way before a lot of microfilming was available, and certainly before the Internet. Anyway, I had no vested interest in any family. I I didn't descend from any of them that came to America. So she said to me, well, where will I begin? I gave her all these names. She said, I said, I don't care. You got to, I want to find them all. She said, no, we have to start somewhere. So I said, okay. I, I'd always been interested in a guy named Dietrich Schneider, one of the 847, for some reason. I said, we know he came from Hockenberg, Germany. Okay, Carla, go there first. We've got to start somewhere. So she did. So dissolve, as we say in the movie, right. to about 15 <laughs> or 20 years later. Uh, since that time, I've found over 600 of the 847 families. 1,500 later arrivals have come to America in the 18th century, and the only family that I am directly related to of that group is the Dietrich Schneider family of Hockenberg. 
My first choice selected totally <laughs> off the wall out of, at random for Carla to look for in her searches for me in Germany. Unbelievable. And, and how many generations back are we talking? Yeah, okay. a long, long, long time back, about eight, somewhere around there. And then other things start happening. We had to do lectures about the Palatines around the country. I've lived on the West Coast all my life and been a few trips to the East Coast, but, but never a lot. But when I would go back sometimes to speak in a place where the Palatines lived on the East Coast in New York or New Jersey, in a couple of instances, uh, the local historian would be taking me around to show me the sites. And I would tell the local historian what was going to be around the bend in the road before we got to it. And I'd never been there before. Oh, boy. And just really spooky <laughs> stuff like that. And, and how could you explain that? What do you think it was about? I don't know. And that really is the success, I think, of the Psychic Roots book. We're in our ninth printing now. And I have no agenda. I don't know why it happens. I just know this stuff happens. So what I basically say is it happens. Enjoy it and use it. Because if there's a feeling that is common to genealogists who are sort of at least open to this, is that if you allow yourself to be led in your searches, it's amazing what you're going to find. I always say follow your hunches and see if the facts back them up and you have nothing to lose. You just more added information that might work for you, and so often it does. Tell me about your serendipitous experience. Um, a couple of them, actually. When I first started, I was 26 years old, living in Florida, went to New York to the archives there and happened to pick a week where it was the worst weather they had had in years. And so we're the only people in the archives, my wife and I. I mean, the, the snow is hitting us sideways as we got off the train to go into the city. And, of course, nobody else was dumb enough to be in the New York archives in weather like this. It was just us and the poor sucker who had to actually operate the office there, and he was not happy to be there. And uh, so we started going about our business, and again, this is before the Internet, going through some microfilm, and halfway through the day, one other person showed up out of the 13 million in the New York metropolitan area, sat next to me because that's where one of the only other microfilm readers that actually worked was sitting, and she overheard me say, oh, Catherine Anspake. She says, excuse me, did you say Anspake? I said, yes. She says, well, that's a very rare name in early New York. I have a friend on Long Island by that name. Maybe he's tied to you. And I, I had no idea. I was just getting going. Anyway, we exchanged information, and in time we figured out we were fourth cousins, and he became a resource for me. We're still in touch after 33 years. Oh, my gosh. And, and what are the odds, you know? The, the odds are formidable, and that, ha the, that happens a lot. He, actually, even my own book, Psychic Roots, took a life of its own. I was at Salt Lake City at the big library, the Family History Library, you know, at my own table doing, doing a lot of intensive research, not even looking up, and all of a sudden I did look up because here comes this lady leading about 20 people behind her. She was the guide of the library and was telling the, the newcomers to the library, you know, where the stacks were, where the microphone readers were and all that stuff, and she happened to walk by my table and just as she's walking by my table, she says to her 20 people, why, yes, there's even a book out about psychic roots and about <laughs> intuition and serendipity and genealogy, to which I stood up immediately and said, I know, I wrote it, and I sat down. <laughs> well, that had to be pleasing. It was pleasing. It was fun. <laughs> Who'd have thought that would happen at that particular time? The timing, the timing of stuff can can be weird. There's a one of my favorite stories was sent to me by Reverend Schuster, who was a minister in the Midwest, and for years he'd wanted to go back east to the East Coast to go to the gravestone of his Schuster ancestors, where they're buried on the East Coast. And for 25 years he'd wanted to do this, but he had a very big congregation; he could never get away from the pulpit to do it. So finally, he just it was sort of like put up or shut up time. He said, "I got to do this." So he went back to the town in New York where he where his ancestors lived, the Schuster family, and he went to the cemetery. And as he walked into the cemetery, he gulped, he told me, because it wasn't just a village cemetery. This was a cemetery that had lots and lots, almost a thousand graves just over hill and dale of that particular area of, of uh, upstate New York. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how he'd ever find his Schuster ancestor's grave. So he found the section of the cemetery who would happen to be walking just near the entrance. And he said, would you happen to know where my Schuster ancestors would be buried. And immediately, the section of the cemetery took him to the graves he had been looking for for 25 years. And Reverend Schuster said to the section, well, how did you ever know out of all these gravestones where the Schuster family's buried without looking it up in your files? And the section told him that he was the fifth person that day to ask for that particular grave. 
And with that, the sexton pointed to a hollow on the hill overlooking the whole cemetery where the 25th annual Schuster family reunion was taking place. <laughs> and as Reverend Schuster said, I walked up the hill and I met my family. Unbelievable. And yeah, how long ago was this? When was this? Well, he told me the story about 20 years ago. Isn't that something? It, you know, just the timing of these things are, can be very weird. Uh, it just it just happens over and over again. I had a good friend. Talk about you, you doing your radio show. There was a, a guy uh, who's deceased now named Nick Vine Hall, who was sort of like the Larry King of, of Australian genealogy. And he had a radio show once a week all throughout New, uh, Australia and New Zealand about genealogy. And Nick came to America and was telling me some stories that had, had been told him on the air. And Nick said, the most common story I'm told on the air is this. And it had variations, and basically it's the same story. It's this. I was looking for my ancestor. I went to the cemetery where my ancestor was buried, but I'd never been there before. I got out of the car, and I walked straight to my ancestor's grave. Yes. I have heard that story, too. Yeah. Isn't that something? It's like they're calling to you. In the, in the forward to the first Psychic Roots volume, Helen Hinchcliffe, uh, one of our fellow fellows, Put it nicely, too. She said, you know, Hank, she said, feeling about one's ancestors as well as thinking about them usually results in a far more successful search. And that's really true. I'm a big champion of genealogies that are not just names and dates. I mean, you ever read a genealogy with just names and dates? Oh. You know, spare me. Right. But <laughs> it's, it's our job to put flesh and, flesh and blood on the skeleton of names and dates and make them come alive again. And it's great to honor your Mayflower ancestor and your Revolutionary War soldier, but don't forget to honor the horse thief, too, because they, too, have their stories, and sometimes they're a heck of a lot more fun. <laughs> I can't argue with you on that point. My my favorite ancestors are some of the biggest scoundrels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt. I don't know how it works. I just think that our ancestors want to be found, and it's sort of our soul's task to do it. This is what we do. We're genealogists. I mean, trying to explain our excitement to a civilian is beyond us because they don't, <laughs> they don't get it. No, no you're we're, absolutely we're, right. We're, I'm, I'm weird cousin Hank who likes dead people. That's fine. <laughs> I am. I'm definitely weird. But well, it, it's, 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 it's part of what we we're supposed to do. And that was another thing that uh, that came through in, in all these 1,300 letters and, uh, shared by genealogists, that this is what we do, it's what we're supposed to do. And uh, so we, we do it, and, and it's just part of our deal here. He's Hank Jones. He's the author of Psychic Roots, Serendipity, and Intuition in Genealogy. Hank, your book's still in print. How can they get it? Uh, actually, you can get it uh, through my website, www.hankjones.com. Excellent. Will you come back and we'll do some more? I'd love to, Scott. Thank you for asking me. Thanks so much for coming on. Okay. And coming up next, another one of the great characters of the family history world. Kind of a newcomer, but he's making a splash. He's A.J. Jacobs from Esquire magazine. We'll get the latest on the global family reunion that's coming up on June 6th in New York City. Next in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. 
Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps, like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. Radio, and then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Got a brick wall in your family tree? Don't know how to break through it? Get professional help from Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. Speak directly with an experienced genealogical researcher, not a salesperson. By calling toll-free 1-877-537-2000. When you call, ask how you can win a free one-hour consultation with an expert genealogist. Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. With over 35 years of research experience, visit HeritageConsulting.com. Did you know your family's memories are being destroyed a little at a time every day. It's true. Old home movies, slides, photos, and audio recordings fade over time. The longer you delay the digitizing of these priceless artifacts, the more likely it is they'll be gone one day. That's why you need to call the Multimedia Center. I brought in VHS videotape and had them transferred to DVD. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And welcome back to Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here, the radio root sleuth with my good friend, A.J. Jacobs, the editor-at-large for Esquire magazine. He is the New York Times best-selling author. I don't have a lot of friends who are New York Times best-selling authors, A.J., but I'm proud that you're one of them. <laughs> well, I don't have a lot of friends who are syndicated radio hosts, so <laughs> right back at you. Well, we're getting ready for June 6th in New York City, right over by where they play the U.S. Open, of course, at the 1964-65 New York Fairgrounds. I spent a little time there as a kid. I think I went seven times, and it was I so cool, that. and I am so excited to be there again with you for the global family reunion that you've been putting together. How are things coming? What's the latest? They're coming great, and partially because you're coming. I am so thrilled for that. But as you know, for those who haven't heard about it, it's a festival for everyone that is going to celebrate family history and the fact that we're all interconnected. There's going to be all sorts of great genealogy groups there, like Family Search, Find My Path, My Heritage. And there are going to be great speakers, like Henry Louis Gates Jr., who does the PBS show, Finding Your Roots, and comedy from Nick Kroll, who's a hilarious comedian, Dr. Oz, and all sorts of activities. I want to see you in the sack race uh, <laughs> there, uh, Fisher. Only if you're right by my side, buddy. 
<laughs> we'll do the three-legged race together. Yeah, okay. That's, that. I, I, that's uh, that. I'm in. And Sister Sledge, as you know, is going to be singing uh, We Are Family. But, yeah, tickets are actually on sale now as of just a couple of days ago. So if you go to uh, globalfamilyreunion.com, you can buy tickets. And if you can't make it to New York, we're having simultaneous festivals all around the world, including in Utah. We're going to have a couple in Utah, one at the Family History Center. Boy, this is going to be such a great thing, and I'm so looking forward to it. If you're not familiar with A.J., he is the king of, I think, what they call immersion journalism. I and, like that. That's a good title. I'll uh, take it. Absolutely. And, and and this is where he basically goes out and finds something he wants to experiment with in his life and lives it as deeply and fully as possible and then writes about it. So I guess the question I would have now, and maybe we're anticipating the book that will probably follow this, AJ, what stories have you come across or experienced during this journey of putting this global family reunion together? Oh, well, yes, the book will be out a year after the global family reunion, and it'll be talking about my adventure doing the dive into the world of genealogy and meeting people like you. So you'll be in there. Don't think you're not going to uh, get a little section. Uh, and also, it'll be talking about this wild revolution that's happening uh, in genealogy because of DNA testing. Uh, I'll be talking about the adventure of being on these global family trees where you literally have on the family search one is literally 270 million people connected yeah, on crazy. one single tree. It's that's insane. Right. So uh, it'll be talking about that and how I'm related to President Barack Obama, for instance. She's my right. aunt, fifth grade aunt, husband's brother's wife. Oh. No, husband's brother's <laughs> wife, seventh grade nephew. There it is. So just the feeling and the experience of being related to almost everyone on Earth, and you, most importantly. That, absolutely. Yeah, well, and see, and you and I ran into each other at Roots Tech in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I saw that you got to sing with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Now, I don't I know, did. a lot of, of yeah. people that just hop in there, and how did that happen? Well, the LDS Church and Family Church have been incredibly supportive of my project, because we both have the same idea that we're all one big family. So they offered this. I did not ask, but they uh, said, would you like to sing with the Tabernacle Choir? And I said, well, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, and so I went there, and we sung a song called I Think the World is Glorious, as lovely as can be. And I was told, in no uncertain terms, to sing softly. Softly, so yes. So I think they had a good sense of what my voice was like before I got there. They did not want me to do a solo. But it was wild. It was. It was, you know, it was. I mean, it was just weird. It's like I'm looking up there and going, wait a minute, there's AJ. Have you sung in choirs before? No, well, maybe in the fourth grade, but not mm. then. And right. they, uh, I was told I did not totally ruin the recording, so that's all I wanted. That's the important thing. To, yeah, my kids told me to lip sync, but I was like, <laughs> you know what? If I'm going to be in there, I'm actually going to do some singing. Wow. And they all had the signs that said, I'm a cousin. Right. That's what sort of I'm, I'm having everyone I can, including you, Take a picture with a sign that says, I am a cousin. Right. And, and we send that out on social media. So, yeah, I have one with all 360 members uh, of the choir holding up the sign. And when I gave a talk at Roots Tech, which, as you know, is the largest genealogy conference, I was the warm-up act for Johnny Osmond, which yes. was very bizarre but delightful. And they had handed out signs to everyone in the audience, all 8,000 members in the audience, and they all held up a sign that said, I am a cousin. So that was an amazing moment. Well, what I don't understand is, why didn't you sing? I mean, Donnie came up there, and he, he, was, he came out blazing. You sang with the choir. That's so true. I am like a professional singer. I'm in the choir, and they didn't have me. I was going to do a little puppy love there, but I figure I wanted Donnie to invite me out to do a duet with him, but he didn't take the hint. He didn't really. Such disrespect. Mm-hmm. Okay, AJ, so we're coming up June 6th at the 1964 World's Fair ground in New York City. People get tickets on the website, globalfamilyreunion.com. They're available right now. How much are they? They are uh, $25. Okay. All proceeds go to Alzheimer's disease. Perfect. Because my grandpa had Alzheimer's, and I think that genealogy, his family history, so much about the stories we tell 
And that's what Alzheimer's robs us of. So I thought that this is the perfect charity for this global family reunion. But yeah, for that, I mean, you get quite a bit. You get into one of the best science museums in the world, which is where it's being held, and you get all these talks and music. And I think it's going to be a, a great time. And you know, I'm your cousin, so I'm not going to lie to you. That, <laughs> that's right. And so this is going on just for one day. So you can just fly in and fly out because it's right next to LaGuardia Airport. That's true. That's true. It's one day, all day long, from 10 a.m. till uh, 8 p.m. Or you can make a weekend of it. And if you can't make it, there are the ones in uh, Utah and some other places like uh, Houston. You can check the globalfamilyreunion.com website to see where the other simultaneous parties are because those will be getting a live stream of some of the talks. Now, do you have something going on in Europe? We do have ones going on in the Netherlands, in England, Germany. So there are, yes, it's going to be a worldwide event. Sounds like you were just about to skip all those. I mean, that's that's a big deal over there. <laughs> It's true. No, I would never skip my European friends. Well, I mean, what's amazing about these worldwide family trees is they're truly worldwide. The one on Genie.com is in 160 countries, including Antarctica, which I love that there are scientists who live in Antarctica who are on the tree. And we've got my heritage now in, I think, 40 languages. So that wow. people of different languages can actually learn to uh, communicate back and forth with the uh, people working the same trees in different countries. It's fantastic. It's unbelievable. And in 10 years, I really believe that we're going to have a single family tree of almost all 7 billion people on Earth. So you can see how any two random people are related, how the Pope is related to Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> you took me in a place I never expected you to go. <laughs> you didn't expect those two in the same sentence. Very nice. All right, AJ, we're so looking forward to seeing you once again. June 6th, New York City, 1964, World's Fairgrounds. It's going to be a great time. You can get your tickets now at globalfamilyreunion.com. In the meantime, just stay focused. No new projects, AJ. <laughs> you got it. No, I barely have time to brush my teeth. I'm so glad you're involved because you are my, uh, my hero. So <laughs> great. Well, likewise, buddy. It is going to be a good time. All right, coming up next, Tom Perry, the Preservation Authority on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher, and I've been telling you about MyHeritage.com's amazing new technology that searches your family tree day and night for you, finding matches even while you sleep in documents and other people's trees. Here's a find I never would have made without it. It's a newspaper story about a relative of mine, Paul Sagal, who I knew many years ago. It's from 1943, when Paul was serving in the Pacific. When he learned his father died, he wrote a poem to his brother that indicated he wouldn't be returning for the funeral. He wrote, There'll be no furlough for me. I'm in the Marines, you see, alive and well as I am. Memories I'll keep of my dad. Then the newspaper editor added, These are all the sentiments that will win this war. There are treasures like this one waiting for you now. Put MyHeritage.com's superb technology to work for you with a 20% discount. Just enter the one-word promo code ExtremeGenes. MyHeritage.com is the next big thing. While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family's story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. You'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Genes listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling. Your priceless 8mm home movies and your precious family videos are deteriorating right now. 
heat, moisture, insects, dust, mold, time, they're all robbing you of your family's memories. It's time to preserve those treasures right now by digitizing them at tmcplace.com. They've been preserving memories for over 40 years. Home movies, videos, audio tapes, vinyl records, photos, slides, and even scrapbooks. Whether your treasures are enduring the humidity of Massachusetts or the heat of Arizona, tmcplace.com can digitize your audio and images without harming the originals and returning them to you with free shipping both ways on most orders. tmcplace.com can even let you track your package in real time with a special GPS tracking device. Trustworthy, experienced, affordable. Call tmcplace.com toll-free at 1-866-483-1717 to talk to Extreme Genes Preservation Authority Tom Perry about your project or order online at shop.tmcplace.com. Welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, with Tom Perry from tmcplace.com. He is our preservation authority. All right, Tom, you're in a little deep doo-doo here. (laughs) Last week, we were talking about the KISS theory, which is keep it simple, stupid. It's a philosophy, really. Exactly. And the idea is that we want to make things as easy as possible, as inexpensive as possible to preserve whatever it may be, old home movies, old videos, uh, maybe even a series of photographs. And we got into quite a bit of detail about how you can ultimately edit these things and make it into a nice presentation that people can see. But uh, we're hearing from a lot of people who are going, wait a minute, wait, I have no computer skills at anywhere near that level. So can we take the KISS Theory 303 and do a little KISS Theory 101 this week? Absolutely. Okay, what we want to do for the people out there that get confused using your iPhone, that you want just something really, really simple, get all your tapes together, bring them into us, send them to anybody that can take your tapes and turn them into DVDs, whether they're audio or video. This goes for both. Then once you get your DVD back, what you want to do is pop it into your player, hit the display button on your remote control, and it'll show you what we call a time code up in the corner. It's kind of a clock that counts up starting at zero, going up to two hours or however long your DVD is. And people in your industry can show people how to do that, right? Exactly. Still in the store. Exactly. If you're still confused, bring your remote control into the store, and we'll show you where the button is. But it's usually called on-screen titles. It's usually called display or something like that. And the neat thing about a DVD that a lot of people, especially some of our older clients, get scared about, they're afraid to push the wrong button on their remote control or their DVD player and erase their disc. It's not going to happen. We don't use RW disc. We don't recommend people using RW disc. So you're not going to erase anything. You can hit any button, and if you get confused, hit eject and start all over again. So it's nothing good. goes away. Nope, nothing will go all away. Right. That's good. Absolutely. <laughs> if you're confused, you know what to do. Hit eject. It's the same thing as hitting restart. Okay. Okay, so now you've got your DVD, get out a ledger pad and a pen, and sit there and watch it and kind of take notes. Say, oh, okay, at 1 minute and 32 seconds, this is Aunt Jessie cooking or whatever. Write down all these different titles and the numbers, where they start and where they stop. Once you've gone through and taken that part off, then you can turn off the DVD, go back and look at your notes and say, hey, you know, some of these things are kind of out of order. I want to make an Aunt Jessie DVD. I want to make a DVD for my kids. I want to make a separate DVD for Grandma and Grandpa. And you can use some of those segments in all of those things, right? Absolutely. Okay, so now you've got all your cliff notes. Now start a new ledger that says, okay, this is Aunt Jessie's. This is for the kids. This is for Grandma and Grandpa. Then go through the DVD you just looked at or DVDs and say, hey, this segment would be great for Grandma. This segment would be great for my kids. This one would be great for me and my husband. These are pieces we want. And then write down disc number one from this time to this time, we want this. And just go through and fill out all those things. And you can use the same segment on the same disc. If you have a disc that say, hey, this is family stuff, but then this is also a special disc for Johnny. Here's another disc that's family stuff. But for Jesse, that's okay. You can use the same thing on multiple times. There's no limit to how many parts you can use. You could actually create then one master part that would go to all of them and then customize them to specific individuals? Exactly. We had that exact same thing for Christmas last year. We had somebody that had eight kids, and they wanted a separate disc for each of their eight kids. But there's some things that were family stuff that everybody wanted, but then there's like the wrestling matches that only Tony wanted, that Amber could care less about wrestling. And then Amber doing the Swan Lake, Tony could care less about that. 
but maybe some of the other kids that were closer, like maybe you have a boy and a girl twin, maybe they want to share some of those things because they're kind of uniquely tied together. So take out all these different ledgers. It's almost like an index box. And we'll go into a little bit more of organizing your index box in the next segment. All right, coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. And then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, Visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. All right, final segment of KISS 101. It's a a philosophy thing here. (laughs) 
on Extreme Genes Family History Radio, America's Family History Show. I am Fisher. I am your radio root sleuth. That's Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, the Preservation Authority. He got us into trouble last week, got a little too technical for some people about preserving old movies and videos and editing them and what that takes to do. So we're doing a 101 version of KISS, Keep It Simple Stupid, a philosophy and Tom, pick it up. Okay, we just talked about getting all your information organized onto a ledger sheet or index card so you know what you have on all your DVDs. Now you're going to create new index cards or new ledger pads. You're going to have one for Donnie, one for Jeremy, one for Susie, one for Sally, Grandma, Grandpa. And then you're going to take these index cards and write down, okay, this is something I want to be on her DVD. This is something I want to be on his DVD. This is something I want to be on Grandma and Grandpa's DVD and start writing them down. You can put them in any order. It doesn't matter how they are chronologically on your DVDs. You can mix them out. Sometimes things are backwards. Sometimes things are shot out of order. It doesn't matter. And sometimes things are useless. Absolutely. (laughs) It's just a complete loss. Oh, yeah. You can have a two-hour DVD, and there might be five minutes of content that you want, so there's no reason to take that other stuff. Just ignore it. You'll always have your DVDs in archive. If somebody says, hey, do you remember we were doing that one day? Oh, yeah, that's all on this disc here. Take it and enjoy it. But the parts that you know that are going to be good, you're going to go and write down these all on the different ledger pads or index cards you have set out for these different people. You can use the same segment on the same index card for Nancy two or three times. You might have, this is Nancy in high school. This is Nancy in elementary school. This is Nancy's dance classes. And there might be something that you want to put in the high school and the dance class. That's fine. You can use a segment 100 times. It's no problem. So how you write it down to bring into us to edit it for you, or if you want to do it yourself. Or your grandchild. Exactly. Often, often kids can do this stuff. Oh, what these kids do with iPads and stuff nowadays is unbelievable. In kindergarten, it just absolutely blows my mind. So you've got all this stuff written down. You want it to write it down on your index cards or on your ledger pad in the order you want the final DVD to be in. So it can go from disc one to disc three, back to disc one to disc four, disc six, any way you want it. You want to write it down in the chronological form you want your new DVD to be in. There's no restrictions on it. You just write down, I want it to start on disc one, go from one minute and 14 seconds to two minutes and 13 seconds, et cetera. So people who do what you do, and you yourself, Tom, Uh can you add uh, captions to these things? Oh, absolutely. Can you add uh, some narration to it? How would that work, say, if somebody who wants to share something with their grandchildren wants to go in and narrate some of it? Where would they do that? There's a couple of ways. We could talk about an entire show on just this, and so maybe in the future we'll do it on that because that's a really good topic. What you're going to want to do on your same index card, say, hey, after I have this piece of Aunt Sally from 1 minute 13 seconds to 2 minutes 16 seconds, I have this group of photographs or slides that I would like to play during this time. So you can mix and match. Right, And but I want my audio to go over and explain what these slides and photographs are. Then it's very, very simple. Just get a tape recorder or something along those lines, And as you're looking at the photo, say, okay, introduce them. Okay, I'm going to go to photo 1 through 16, then count 10 seconds so we have time to edit and say, okay, this is Aunt Sally bringing home her new Oldsmobile. She took us for a ride. This is a picture of this. This is a picture of this. All this different stuff. And then finish. Say, okay, now I'm done with picture 1 through 12 or whatever. And then what we will do is we'll go down and lay your audio track and make the pictures match it so it comes together. So it's pretty easy to do. If you have more questions, write me, ask Tom at tmcplace.com. And in the future, maybe we'll do a segment and go into more tying your audio, your video, doing voiceovers and narrations. All right. Thanks so much, Tom. Thank you. I cannot believe how much ground we have covered today. Thanks once again to Hank Jones, author of Psychic Roots. Once again, you can order those books through his website, hankjones.com. Thanks also to A.J. Jacobs. He is the man behind the Global Family Reunion coming up in New York City. Hope you'll be a part of it no matter where you are, whether or not you're in New York City. Join us again next week. Like our Facebook page. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. 